wow, you guys really wanted me to check this one out, didn't you? Seriously, I had hundreds of messages recommending this film. So, you know what? Fine. I mean, it looks cute enough. People keep comparing it to Finding Nemo, so I'm all for that. It'll be a nice change of pace to review something that's adorable and family-friendly. Oh! Oh my god. Huh. So, that's why you all want me to see this. <sighs> I hate you guys. But real talk, I loved this film. My expectations going into this film were pretty low, but this movie blew it out of the water. I swear that pun wasn't on purpose. Or on porpoise. <laughs> Legit, I thought Podoc would be just some fish mutilation with a boring plot to justify its gore. But it is so much more than that. It actually had a very interesting story that held my attention the entire way through. Its tone? Very dark, with mature themes and disturbing symbolism to boot. There's life versus death. Freedom versus imprisonment. Sushi versus sashimi. Oh! Honestly, if there was a movie that might convince you to become vegan, oh, <laughs> this is it. All right, so who's behind this movie? Unfortunately, there's not much information about this film or the folks behind it. All I really know is that it was made by a South Korean studio called E Dehi Animation Studio, and it was directed by someone named Dehi Lee. I was lucky enough to find an interview with the director as he shared his inspirations for Padok. When asked about how he came up with the idea for the movie, he said, quote, There was a sushi restaurant on my way home from work. A large water tank full of fish was placed in front of the restaurant. At first, I was sympathetic towards the fish, because a school of fish forced to live in a glass tank looked like me struggling at work. The fish might try to get out, but it's likely to end up in failure. So did I. I could find comfort because I am in a better position than the group of fish. At least I am not destined to be killed by other people. Later, it occurred to me that the fish and the restaurant can be main characters to depict human society." End quote. Dehi Lee also mentioned how important it was to him to accurately depict a sushi restaurant and how grim the atmosphere can be for a fish who is essentially living in a prison. He also mentions themes he was striving for, such as power struggles and change against the old rules. Padak, also called Swimming to Sea, was released in 2012, but wasn't that big of a hit. It won some awards at South Korean movie festivals, but it was mostly unknown when it came to the international scene. But it was picked up by Ego Manga in 2016 and was made available on, I, surprisingly enough, Steam. I, I mean, that's where I watched it. I had no idea that Steam sold movies, but <laughs> there you go. All in all, it seems that Podoc is currently making its way around the internet, and that's awesome. It is truly unique with its vision and inspiration. The director had a goal to showcase the horrors of being a sentient fish on death row. And yeah, he absolutely nailed it, because this film is downright terrifying. <laughs> So, what's the movie about? The film starts off with Padak, our main character, being in a state of shock, as she's sold by fishermen and is taken to a fish shop. There, she is dumped into a tank with some other fish. And then the movie makes it very clear, very quickly, how high the stakes are in this film. You either play dead, or you become dead. From that point on, we learn about the culture of the fish tank and its pecking order. Flatfish is the leader and expects others to fall in line and follow his command. There is his lieutenant, Eel, and then there's the rest of the cast. Snapper, Seabass, Bream, and Spotty. We learn from Podoc's point of view how Flatfish controls the minds and the actions of the fish. He gets to eat first. He controls the knowledge and the information. He also claims that he's from the ocean, while the other fish here are from fish farms. But throughout the movie, Podoc rivals him, 
어떻게 우리랑 올드너츠님이랑 같다고 생각할 수가 있어 너네들 정말 바보구나 정말 그렇게 생각하는 거야? 우리랑 다르지 않아 다르다고 얘기한 올드너츠가 이상한 거지 그래 자기 맘대로 얘기하는 거야 너희들에게 거짓말하고 있는 거라고 She doesn't want to just survive She wants to escape She's from the ocean And she can hear its call It drives her forward While the rest of the fish have given up That is basically the backbone of this entire film The power struggle between Padok versus the other fish in the tank, mainly Flatfish, who is, by the way, also called Halibut, but I'm just gonna call him Flatfish. Despite all of the trials and tribulations, Padok never gives up hope and even inspires some of the other fish in the tank. Hell, she even makes Flatfish question himself and ask, what am I living for? It is a surprisingly deep movie that features mature themes. Now, I understand why some people see this film as a Finding Nemo ripoff, but trust me, it is very different. The only thing I see in common is how both movies feature fish who want to escape humans, and also clownfish. Though, Paddock gets very, very dark with it. So what? I'm funny now? I'm a funny guy just because I'm dressed like a clown? I suppose you think I shouldn't have a gun either! All right, let's go over my five points. First, the story. The setting makes this movie. We're practically stuck in a fish tank for the entire duration of the film. But guess what? That works in the favor of the movie. Four glass walls and the ocean within eye shot. Freedom. Yet, there's no way out of this tank except death. Or is there? By having all of our main characters crammed into a fish tank, it builds a high level of tension and stresses the power struggle of the fish and the tank. Paddock refuses to give up. She doesn't want to be killed and never loses faith in escaping her prison, while the other fish have a more pessimistic point of view. That is essentially the main plot of the movie, surviving an uncaring world and breaking free of captivity. It's a simple story, but incredibly effective. As far as the characters go, it's made abundantly clear at the start that there is a pecking order in the fish tank, that information is warped and controlled by flatfish, and anyone who rivals his authority will be punished. Now, most of these fish have already surrendered their hope and fall in line just so they can survive until tomorrow. Paddock wants more than that. She doesn't want just tomorrow. She wants to be completely free. And to the fish in the tank? That's madness! And guys, the character development was incredibly satisfying and also surprising. Paddock never loses hope. She never gives in to the oppressive rule of Flatfish. Hell, she even inspires Spotty, a naive character, that he too might be able to escape to the sea. The only moment we see Paddock break was when she ate the clownfish. But to be fair, she quickly realized what she was becoming. But the biggest shocker to me, by the way, spoilers, was that Paddock died at the end. Flatfish was literally on the chopping block, but was spared in exchange for Paddock instead. She died, he lived. But what was he living for? Throughout the movie, we see other characters challenge Flatfish and his pessimistic attitude. But it was Paddock's death that inspired him to escape. Like, damn, what a twist. And I loved it. And like I said before, this movie has heavy themes. Life versus death, hope versus defeat. But I think the biggest one of all is freedom versus imprisonment. I mean, yeah, humans aren't stuck in fish tanks waiting on death row. But we find ourselves imprisoned in different ways, such as work. I definitely picked up on that from watching this film. Overall, there is an existential tone to this movie. Life weighs heavy on the shoulders of these characters. But do they give in? Or do they strive for something more? All in all, a very satisfying story. The voice acting was good, the editing was good, and big props to the dialogue. We're basically stuck in this fish tank for the majority of the film, so having strong dialogue was super important. 
It really delivered when it came to building tension among the characters and how they were fighting with one another. And always, there's the looming threat of being killed by the humans. There is a lot of stress in this movie, and rightfully so. And the dialogue did a wonderful job of getting that point across. It held my attention, and I was truly invested in these fish and the power struggle going on in their tank. Again, no one was invincible, and the movie was quick to establish that. Anyone could die at any moment, and there is a palpable sense of fear and dread because of it. And finally, there is the animation. My first impressions weren't the best when I went into this film. I thought it looked ugly and rough around the edges, but I quickly realized that was on purpose. This movie wanted to highlight the grim atmosphere of the fish shop and the fish tank. The humans are ugly. The fish look sad and gray and dead on the inside. Honestly, it works, and it adds that much more to the film. We also get these first-person point-of-view shots of Podok and the anxiety she's feeling while in the fish tank. Also, like I said, the director wanted to accurately depict a fish shop, how the fish are unceremoniously dumped into a tank and just await death. For a creature to see and understand the fate that lies before them, that's terrifying! And the visuals capture that horror in a very accurate way. When you step into their shoes, it is a nightmare. Oh, and massive props to the song segments of the film. Yeah, there's songs in this movie. Surprise, surprise! All three songs were done in different styles and conveyed different feelings and messages. We even got some abstract imagery that made me think about the symbolism from Pink Floyd, The Wall. These song segments are a good change of pace and change of scenery from the fish tank and allow the audience a moment of reprieve before we go right back to the prison. Oh, this, this is beautiful. So how would I improve the film? Honestly, I would just leave it alone. Now, is it perfect? No. It has its flaws, but they're acceptable. But if I had to make changes, I would have spent a little more time on Flatfish and fleshing out his relationships with the other fish in the tank. Him coming around at the end and showing sympathy felt a bit sudden, and it's mainly focused on a single flashback. Now, I'm not saying it was poorly handled. I just wish there was a bit more substance to him caring about Spotty. But hey, that's just my opinion. All in all, though, Paddock was a surprisingly good movie. I was entertained all the way through. And it's a testament to how you don't need a large, epic narrative to tell a satisfying story. The setting, the characters, the story. All of them were very intimate, but that was effective for a film that's built around life and death. In my opinion, it's a much better take on the idea of sentient food compared to, you know, Sausage Party. How you like them apples? Who, us? No, not you. <laughs> Paddock made much more sense and did a better job of creating anxiety and dread for the characters. So this film gets a big recommendation from me. Again, it's on Steam, because why not? So, if you want to, go check it out. Oh. Oh. <laughs>